Hi everyone, and uh, welcome to Valley Crafty Corner. Um, I was asked after I did the Hero Arts uh, ink comparison um, if I could delve into the Jenny Bolin inks a little bit farther. Um, so what I did is I took all the Jenny Bolin inks that I have and just compared them onto different paper because um, I thought, well, maybe you know, there's a reason why they're not stamping really good. Maybe it's Maybe it's the paper that they're stamped on. Um, maybe there's a better purpose for for these uh, inks as well. So again, I wanted to stamp out all the um, inks that I had. I used the same um, stamp set. And I came up with different results for the different colors of inks. It's almost like certain ink pads are a little wetter than other ones. Uh, so I'm just going to go through the colors and then I'll show you what I mean. So this one's Lemon Drop, this one's Chewing Gum, this one's Speckled Egg, this one's Stick Candy, Malted Milk, Lavender Sachet, Seed Packet, Cough Syrup, Spice Tin, Chili Powder, Brown Sugar, and Fountain Pen. So I'm just going to get into a close-up and this is using that same close to my heart Whisper White uh, cardstock or White Daisy I guess it's called. It's called White Daisy, sorry. So this is how the yellow one stamped and actually it stamped out pretty nice. Then we move over to the bubble gum and it still looks a little bit uh, wet. Like it looks like it was a really wet ink. And same thing with the speckled egg. And then we get into the stick candy and it's the same thing. But the malted milk seemed to stamp pretty well. And then we go to the lavender sachet and this one looked really, really wet too. And, and like if you look at these two, you can see what I mean that it looks really wet because right here you can't see the definition in that little um, middle piece where the tire is. And also here, you don't see the definition really well. So in the seed packet, you can see it's stamped pretty well. I stamped it twice just because I didn't like how this one turned out. I wanted to give a different impression. And this one's stamped really well. This is cough syrup. And it was, it was pretty much the same as the seed packet. It was about the same as, as it stamped. And I again, stamped the spice tin a second time just because it didn't get a good impression the first time. So the spice tin turned out really, really well, and the chili powder turned out about medium, I would say, in between, you know, the really wet one and then the really detailed one, like the spice tin. And then the brown sugar, I stamped it twice, and if you can see that dot there, that's how wet that stamp pad is, is it actually dropped um, a bit of ink onto the paper. So I just wanted to do a second impression, but you can still tell it's pretty wet just from that dot right there. And then the fountain, plant, fountain pen was really crisp and clean. So it really depended on uh, the inks, like the ink pads themselves. So I found that very interesting. So then I wanted to see if it made a difference on the cardstock. So again, this was the close to my heart white daisy. So then I just went to my stash and I found this piece of, um, I think it's American Crafts. It comes in this Studio Calico, uh, the Calico and More kits. It's got a really textured side on this side. I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up. You can see that texture right there. And I just stamped it on the flatter of the textured side. And I'm just going to go along, ignore the black. That was just residue from the last time I had stamped it. So you can tell that one stamps pretty nice and it's like you're going to see the texture in here and that's why it doesn't stamp very awesome but you can still see the detail but it's still pretty wet right here and same thing on this one and this one. Now we're getting a little better we're getting into a little bit more um, of the detail you can just see like it's got a little bit more detail into it. This one's super super wet. And then we get into the green one again where it stamps pretty decent. The red one, uh, the cough syrup's pretty decent. The navy one's really good. 
the chili powder, not too bad. The brown, not too bad. And then the black is pretty good. So that was interesting too, because now we can start to see the consistency where the blue and the black and the green and the, the cough syrup and the lemon drop one all seem to be consistently with stamping really well for quality, whereas the other ones seem to be really, really wet. And then I wanted to compare to see if maybe um, craft cardstock had a better tooth to it. So I just wanted to stamp out on craft cardstock. And these ones are actually pretty interesting. So the lemon drop did not too bad. And the bubble gum did pretty well. But it's hard to see because of the craft cardstock. The, um, I think this one's Robin's Egg. Yeah, Robin's Egg did not too bad and the green one was still a little wet and this was my boo-boo I didn't ink up the stamp the whole way the malted milk is impossible to tell um, it, when it was really wet you could tell but now you can't so um, the purple one was still really really wet the green one stamps really nice the red one really nice navy really nice Chili powder, really nice. The brown one's really nice. Still a little wet just because I'm looking right here. And then the navy one stamped really well. So this cardstock, on this cardstock, they all fared out pretty well. So that was kind of interesting. So um, I've used um, the cough syrup on craft cardstock. And that's why I was kind of amazed that the speckled egg um, didn't stamp so well on my test results. So this is a good comparison to go by on how each of these inks stamp on each of the different cardstock. So then the other question is, uh, that I was asked was, well, what do we do with our Jenny Bolin inks now? Like what are, do they serve a purpose for anything else? So I tried to come up with some different things that I could think of that I would use my inks for anyway, besides stamping. Um, so I wanted to pick a light ink and a dark ink just to see how the results would vary. So I took chewing gum and spice tin and I stamp or just inked up these wood veneers. And of course the wood veneers are going to take the ink really well, but with the light ones, just like any other dye ink is because it's uh, a translucent ink. Um, it, when it goes on the wood veneer, it doesn't, really show very well. So for wood veneers I would stick to the darker colors. Um, that's a better image to see how translucent it is. Let's see if I can get in there for the the pink one. You can see that it's pretty translucent still which is nice because then you can still see the wood grain. And then this is the uh, I don't know if it'll focus on that little guy but anyway it's a really nice dark blue. So for wood veneers, it works really well for wood veneers. Then I wanted to ink up some die pieces. So all I did was um, just ink some of the inks down on a craft mat. And I just spritzed it with water a little bit and just stuck these pieces into it. So this is Spice Tin. And it inks up really well. So, and you can see, like, it's... It was really saturated in it, so it took the ink took the ink really, really well. So there's the butterfly. That's in the speckled egg, and this one's in chili powder. And this one took the ink really, really well too. So, you know, the ink doesn't really blend out too bad when you spritz it with water. So that's kind of nice. It's it's relatively close to the color that is on the indicator mark. So that's nice to know as well. Um, then I took some uh, white chipboard. Um, these are from Close to My Heart. I used to be a Close to My Heart consultant and I'm not anymore. Um, so I just took some old stash that I had. Just I did some with the resist pattern on it just so you can get a better gist. And this one's in the lemon drop and this one's in the brown sugar. And they take the ink really, really well, especially these Jenny Bolin ones. The close to my art inks don't work very well for these. I find the color isn't true 
And these are a really true color when they're inked up on um, on these pieces. So that's that's good to know that they, they do take these uh, chipboard pieces, take the ink really, really well. So that's the brown sugar and the lemon drop. So the other thing I was thinking is because these inks are so wet, I wondered if you could do some of the techniques that you can do with the Tim Holtz just, just Distress Ink. Um, now, they don't work exactly like the Distress Inks because the Distress Inks are a little bit of a wetter ink. They take longer to dry. Um, these dry relatively quickly, but you can still get some of the same results. So I used the speckled egg, lemon drop, and the brown sugar for the results or for the techniques that I did. So the first one I did was this tag here and I just smushed down the brown sugar, the lemon drop, and the speckled egg ink in, onto the craft sheet and then I just dropped the tag into it and then I just picked up some of the color before. The second time you do the color, it, because it's not like the distress inks, it doesn't pick up the colors as well and blend them into the other colors. It just kind of sits on top. So, you know, that's the other thing is you could do a first generation of these colors and they would still be really nice, but I wouldn't do like an, another sitting in the ink because it kind of washes it out a little bit. But you can definitely see you can get the same results. So that's kind of neat. And then I also did just with the blending tool, I just took the same kinds of inks and just blended them onto a tag. And so there's the speckled egg, the yellow, and then the brown you can see. And then I did the spritz and flick technique and it does the same water drop technique as it does with the distressing. So I thought that was very interesting. You could put these in your... Um, you know, repertoire of your distress inks and they would really work really well to with each other. So the, that's some of the findings that um, I found with the Jenny Bolin inks. Um, so they're, it's not that they are, um, you know, a, a really bad ink. Uh, they, they serve their purpose for, you know, certain things. Um, like I said, I, I did a lot of these techniques and and I would probably put these in with my distress inks just because I could do a first generation with them and get, you know, add a few more colors to my repertoire because last I checked, Tim Holtz doesn't have a navy blue and I really like navy blue. So that's kind of nice to add in with your distress inks that you could use those in there as well. Um, and then it's also nice to know that on craft card stock that these inks, um, uh, do really really well and uh, that you know on these other colors of cardstock or like on these other cardstock you're just gonna have to watch to s and know that some of these are super super wet inks and they just really blend out and if you like that look then that's all right but just be aware that they really do blend out so if you're looking for a defined uh, word you know you might not get it with that particular color. So anyway, those are the result findings that I came up with. Let me know if you have any other questions and I will be glad to do another video for you guys. And I hope everybody has a great day. Thanks. Bye.